San Diego Part 2. In this episode, we're going to explore the Old Town area. I'll talk about the significance this place holds in California history, show you some interesting places to visit, and at the end of the tour, I'll reveal Old Town's best kept secret. And with that, let's go ahead and start the tour! Old Town San Diego is located right off the I-5 freeway, just about a 10 minute drive north of downtown San Diego, and there are several free parking lots in the area. You can also hop on the green or blue line to get to Old Town from downtown, or if you're taking the Amtrak Pacific Surfliner to or from San Diego, you can get to Old Town that way as well. Just note that some departure times skip this stop and go straight to downtown San Diego. So just double check when booking the Amtrak train. We're starting this walking tour at the land of the first people within the Old Town State Historic Park. Continue up to the Presidio Park where the Junipero Serra Museum is located. Make our way back towards the State Historic Park and walk along Juan Street past the Mormon Battalion Historic Site and over to Heritage Country Park with its Victorian style houses. After that, it's time for lunch at the iconic Old Town Mexican Cafe, and then we tour the rest of the Old Town State Historic Park. At the end of the tour, I'll show you some really, really cool experiences, including Old Town's best kept secret. While the Old Town State Historic Park was established in 1968 and is the most visited state park in California today, the story of Old Town goes way back. Native American culture in the San Diego area dates back to over 10,000 years ago. When the Europeans arrived in the 1500s at what is known as Old Town San Diego today, it was home to the Kumeyaay people. You can learn about the Kumeyaay at the Land of the First People area within the state park, located at the corner of Taylor and Juan Street. The Kumeyaay lived a sophisticated hunter-gatherer lifestyle, mainly eating small game and acorns. They lived on the banks of the San Diego River for thousands of years, which was a source of water, food, medicine and building materials. This mosaic on the ground shows the constellations of the summer sky. For the Kumeyaay, the constellations represent stories of creation, life lessons and harmony in celestial cycles. The first European explorer to arrive was Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo claiming the area for Spain, calling it San Miguel in September 1542. While Cabrillo described the Kumeyaay as good-natured and attractive people, it's important to note that Cabrillo took advantage of slave labor by forcing indigenous Guatemalans to work for him on his land, mines, shipbuilding and also on his vessels during his voyages. For more information on Cabrillo and his discovery of San Diego, check out my tour of the Cabrillo National Monument. Old Town San Diego is called the birthplace of California because in 1769 Father Junipero Serra, a Spanish Roman Catholic priest and missionary, established the first permanent European settlements in California. He built the first of the 21 missions that anchored the development of California for Spain. The mission was originally built next to the Spanish fort called the Presidio, located atop a hill overlooking Old Town. We are now at the Presidio Park, where the Junipero Serra Museum is located on the site of the first permanent European settlement in what is today the state of California. Note that the museum is only open Saturdays and Sundays, but you can walk the grounds any day of the week. Across the street from the museum you can see the Serra Cross, a monument to Father Junipero Serra built in 1913 from fragments of tiles from the original Presidio of 1769. If you continue a little further along Presidio Drive, you get to this wide open park area. Certainly a great spot to relax and have a picnic. This is where the old Fort Stockton was located. In 1821 Mexico became independent from Spain and in 1822 a new military command created a community at the base of the Presidio, which is the area where the Old Town State Historic Park is located today. 
Atop this hill in the Presidio, you will also find the Mormon Battalion Monument. The Mormon Battalion was the only religious unit in United States military history and federal service, recruited solely from one religious body and having a religious title as the unit designation. The volunteers served from July 1846 to July 1847 during the Mexican-American War of 1846-48. In 1850, California became a state and San Diego was incorporated as a city that same year. Alright, let's leave the Presidio and walk along Juan Street at the Old Town Historic Park. While we just saw the Mormon Battalion Monument, here we pass the Mormon Battalion Historic Site, which chronicles the history of the only religiously based unit in US military history. The museum is free and open 7 days a week. Right across the street is the Heritage Park Victorian Village, where several of San Diego's most notable Victorian homes have been relocated to and authentically restored to their original splendor. These buildings used to be located in downtown San Diego, but in order to avoid demolition due to the expansion of downtown after World War II, the historical houses were relocated with the help of public and private funds. While I was there, I briefly spoke to a ranger on site. She told me that none of the buildings can be accessed right now, with the exception of the McConaughey House, where you can visit a tea house, and the Old Town Gift Emporium, specializing in Victorian porcelain dolls. It's open Thursday through Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. All other houses are being remodeled and converted into little boutique hotels. This right here is the Temple Beth Israel, San Diego's first synagogue, where the first services were held in 1889. It's open daily from 9am to 5pm unless there is a private event. Alright, moving on. We are walking down Harney Street where we pass the Whaley House Museum at the corner of San Diego Avenue. It stands today as a classic example of mid-19th century Greek Revival architecture. Over a hundred thousand people visit the Whaley House annually. Thomas Whaley constructed this first two-story brick building in San Diego back in 1857. Originally constructed as a granary, it had several functions over the years such as the county courthouse, San Diego's first commercial theater, and the Whaley and Crossway General Store. The museum offers all kinds of different experiences, such as a spooky evening tour, as some say it's America's most haunted house. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out all the different offerings. Alright, it's time for lunch. Across the street from the Whaley House, you'll find the Old Town Mexican Cafe. Founded in the late 70s, this restaurant offers authentic Mexican cuisine. One of their most popular dishes is the carnitas plate and the tortillas are homemade. I can highly recommend this place. They are open every day for breakfast, lunch and dinner. We leave the restaurant, make a left and just a few steps down the street we see the Church of Immaculate Conception. The cornerstone of the church was laid in 1868, but due to funding issues and a devastating fire in Old Town, the church was not completed until July 1917. Today it serves 300 families in the San Diego region as well as visitors from around the world. Alright, so we already saw the land of the first people area of Old Town San Diego State Historic Park and now it's time to explore the rest of what can be considered the heart of Old Town. I always love walking through here with all the restored original historic buildings complemented by reconstructed sites that tell the story of life here in the Mexican and early American periods of 1821 to 1872. You'll get a glimpse into these past times where San Diego transformed from a Mexican pueblo to an American settlement. This is the Casa de Aguirre, one of the first houses built in Old Town San Diego in 1853. This is a reconstruction as the original building was torn down in 1914. The building houses a museum and gift shop. And from here you can also get to the Old Town Market area, an outside area with different stands selling all kinds of items and at times they also have live music. 
This is the San Diego Union Printing Office, the site of the city's oldest surviving newspaper, the San Diego Union. Here we see the Mason Street School, California's first public schoolhouse built in 1865. Next to the school is La Casa de Machado y Stewart, which houses artifacts that reflect ordinary life of the period. This is La Casa de Machado y Silvas, one of five historic adobe structures located in the park. It was built in the early 1840s and was a residence until it was converted to a restaurant in the 1850s. Over the years it was a cafe, art studio, souvenir shop and community chapel before it became part of the state park in 1968. The historic plaza at the center of the park is where the American flag was first raised over San Diego in 1848. The community was designated the seat of San Diego County when California was admitted into the Union in 1850. Two decades later, when portions of the community burned in 1872, the center of San Diego was relocated to the area occupied by today's downtown. Old Town San Diego Historic Park was created to protect the historic buildings that remained from that bygone era. This is the reconstructed Robinson Rose House, originally built in 1853. The building was the residence of James Robinson, who developed a successful law practice and at the same time was also home to the San Diego Herald, a railroad office and other private offices. Today it houses the visitor center with this impressive model of Old Town the way it looked back in 1872. Alright, now we're getting into the Fiesta de Reyes area, which houses Casa de Reyes, a Mexican restaurant with plenty of outdoor seating. As you can imagine, it gets really busy here during festivities like Cinco de Mayo, or many years ago I was here for Dia de los Muertos, which was really really fun and interesting to be here for that. You'll also find all kinds of different stores within the Fiesta de Reyes area. This is the Cosmopolitan Hotel and Restaurant. It was constructed by Juan Lorenzo Bandini, one of San Diego's pioneers, between 1827 and 1829. The single-story home was built around Falls Bay, which became Mission Bay circa 1944. Bandini's goal for the home was to make sure his wife and two daughters were most comfortable. The home had seven rooms, an entrance hall, an enclosed courtyard, a coral and several sheds and barns. It was designed with Spanish colonial architectural features such as thick adobe walls, pane glass windows and a brick lined patio. It is a working hotel and I definitely plan on staying here on one of my future visits to San Diego. Alright, enough touring, now it's time for some fun and unique experiences and, as promised, I'm gonna reveal Old Town's best kept secret. Just southeast of the State Historic Park, along San Diego Avenue, you'll see El Campo Santo Cemetery, a small cemetery where several early San Diegans are buried. Right next to it is Tahona Bar. Their mission is to educate and give reference to the complexity and beauty of Mexican culture through its most iconic beverage, mezcal. They provide different mezcal tasting experiences. You can either order a flight that comes with an info sheet about the different mezcals, or you can also book a proper mezcal tasting experience where a mezcal specialist will serve you four different mezcales and walk you through each expression as you journey through different agaves, producers and states of Mexico. You'll definitely want to book this experience in advance as they get busy. Link is in the description below. And after your mezcal experience, head over to Oculto 477 a really cool speakeasy in the back of the Tahona bar. It's a really fun spot with a great atmosphere, incredible bartenders that create super cool unique drinks. 
Please note that the speakeasy is very small and you do need a reservation. Thanks so much for joining me on this tour of Old Town San Diego. If you haven't already, check out my tour of the Cabrillo National Monument next. My San Diego series continues in downtown San Diego next week. I hope you join me on that tour as well. And with that, I say thank you and Dankeschön!